In this video, I'm going to demonstrate how to create MLA citations for websites. The basic format is the author's last name, comma their first name, then the web page title in quotes, the website title in italics, then the publisher, comma publication date, then the medium, which in most cases is going to be web for website, but if you were, say, doing a YouTube video, it would be video, or if you're citing a particular picture or image, you could put image there. And then finally, you end it with the date that you accessed it. MLA no longer requires that you put the URL at the end of a citation. If you think that someone can find the actual page that you were citing with just the web page title and, say, the author's last name and putting them in Google, then you don't have to put the URL there. But if you think that there's any sort of case where they might not be able to track down your original thing, it's a good idea to put the URL there anyway. Now, the internet is not standardized, so there's a lots of times when you can't find all of this information, and that's okay. MLA has ways to deal with that. If you don't know who actually wrote a particular item that you're citing, you just leave out the author's name and start with the web page title. If you don't have a web page title, if it's like a home page or you can't figure out what the web page title is, then you could just start with the website title. If you can't figure out who the specific publisher is, who is the person who is paying for this to be put on the internet, then you can put n.p. in place of publisher. And if for whatever reason there's no publication date or copyright date, then you just write n.d. But in all of those cases, in every single web citation you should have, you should have the publisher and publication date in there, even if it is n.p. comma n.d. Also, I will point out that a lot of times on the internet, the publisher is the same as the website title because, you know, Coca-Cola company bought the Coca-Cola.com URL and would like to name their website title after themselves and they're paying for it to be out there, so they're the website title and publisher. In that case, you still need to identify them separately. So you would have Coca-Cola in italics, period, Coca-Cola the publisher, organization, comma, and the publication date that they released it. The first thing we're going to try to cite is this article on sequestration. So the first thing that we're looking for is the author's name, and in this case we have it, it's Travis Waldron. So we do last name first, comma, his first name, and then you do the web page title in quotes. So the difference between a website title and a web page title is a website is made of many pages. The page title is the thing that changes on each page. The website title is the thing usually across the top that stays the same. So if I go to other pages on this website, I notice that this is changing down here, but think progress up at the top is always going to stay the same. No matter which article I go to, this is the actual information that I'm citing, and this is the title of that article, but this up at the top is staying the same. So what's at the top of the actual information that I'm citing, the actual article that I'm citing, is the web page title, and the thing at the top that doesn't ever change is the website title. So in the case of our original article here, the web page title is Sequestration Drives Up Fees on Federal Student Loans. All right? Sequestration drives up fees on federal student loans, period. All right, so then the website title is the thing that stays the same. So in that case, that's Think Progress. And we put that in italics. The next thing we're looking for is the publisher. So who is actually paying for this to be out on the internet? Um, so oftentimes you can go all the way down to the bottom of the screen and it's usually the person who owns the copyright. In that case, this is the Center for American Progress Action Fund. So we'll just copy that, come over here. There are our publisher. The publication date, the date that it was actually written was March 18th. And we need to format it in the MLA format, which is date, and then the first three letters of the month, and then the year. This is a website, so we'll put web. And then the date that I accessed it today happens to be the 18th of June, 2013. Now, 
I know that somebody can just Google and come up with my article, so I don't need to put the URL at the end. But if there was any sort of question about that, by all means, I can copy the URL and put it at the end. I don't need to, though. This, in and of itself, is a correct MLA citation for that website. So we'll make that a little bit smaller so we have room to try another one. All right, so who is the author? Let's say I wanted to cite this particular fact. Who actually wrote this fact? Well, I can kind of go up to here to view history and see everybody who's contributed to this particular article, but I don't know which one of these people, or IP addresses, actually wrote the fact that sequestrator is derived from sequester. So in this case, I'm just going to leave author blank because I don't know who's the actual person who wrote the fact that I would have cited. If we don't have the author, then we just start with the page title. And again, the page title is the thing that changes with whatever page you go to. And in case of Wikipedia, it's usually the article title. So the article title is sequestration law. I'll put that. All right, then the site title is the thing that's going to stay the same no matter which one of these Wikipedia articles I go to. And that's this header up here, so it's Wikipedia. And we put that in italics. Then we have the publisher. So who actually claims the copyright for this? In this case, this is the Wikimedia Foundation is the actual organization that funds it. When was this last published or updated? Do we have an update date? Can we find one? Looking around, looking around. Sometimes it's at the top, sometimes it's at the bottom. Oh, last bad of modified on the 21st of February. So 21 February 2013. This is a website. And again, I accessed it on the 18th of June 2013. For our last example, we'll do this website from the White House. So let's say I wanted to cite the information that President Obama has been working together to reduce our deficit by $2.5 trillion. All right, who actually wrote that little bit of data? Who is the person who attached their name to that? And it doesn't look like there is actually an author for that particular piece of data. So again, we're just not going to have an author. So if we don't have an author, we just start with the web page title. So the web page title is the name of the thing that it's going to change when I go to different places. So it looks like what is the sequester is the name of the page title. Because when I go to other places, this is staying the same. So that's the website title. But this is changing. So what is the sequester is the name of our page. The web page title is going to be the White House, because that's the thing that's staying the same. And so we're going to put that in italics. Then we need the publisher. And in this case, the publisher is, looks like, whitehouse.gov, so just the White House. And again, this is a case where they are the organization that is paying for this to be out on the internet and the publisher name happens to be the same as the site title but you still need to repeat it. The publication date, do we know when this was released on the internet? I'm not seeing a particular date, not even seeing a copyright date, so I'm gonna say no date, so n.d. Again this is a website and I got it on the 18th of June 2013. And that's basically how you do it. If you don't have a publisher, uh, if you don't know the specific organization that's paying for the electricity, you would just do n.p. comma n.d. You still need to have the publisher and the date in there, even if you don't know what they are. You can leave out the author if you don't know who the author is. You can leave out the page title if you don't have a specific page title. But you should always have at least a site title, the publisher, the date, web, and the date that you accessed it. The reason why we say include the date that you accessed it is because if I go back and double check your information and I see that it was updated, say, on June 
30th and you cited it on June 18th, then I know that the information I'm reading is different than the information that you were reading back when you cited it. So maybe what you cited has been corrected or changed or is no longer accurate. It's just more information for the people who are following up on your citations.